What's good guys, it's Girl Facts, hope you guys are well. Today we have a special guest, she is a multi-genre artist, an international artist from Angola, Portugal. I'm joined by the gorgeous, amazing Noor, hey! Hi, hello, how are you? Thank you so much, Fats, for having me, and uh, it's it's a great honor, you know, to be here. <laughs> oh, that's so, so right. you're welcome. I've been dying to have a conversation with you. We have so much to talk about, but first off, you look good. Your skin's glowing. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday, Thank you. you performed at the Along the Coast Festival in Portsmouth. I'm sure you brought the energy, the vibe on stage. Were yeah. you nervous or were you thinking to yourself, you know what, I've been ready. I have always bring the heat. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, to, with those things, like, obviously, I'm always nervous because it's always like, you know, a different audience, a different stage. And uh, but I, I feel like, you know, I just need to bring that energy out. You know, I need to have like I need to leave a mark so people can remember <laughs> once I'm out off the stage. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, I love that. That excites you about being on stage. Uh, I love the warmth with like the energy, like with people. I like to have eye contact. I like to, to feel people's energies and also to give the energy because I have so much energy in me, especially my name means light. So it's a frequency, it's light, it's, it's an energy. So I feel like when I'm on stage, I'm feeding these people with great energy, you know? So, um, yeah. Pretty much. You like to be connected with the with the crowd, right? Yeah, I do. I and if you don't connect with the crowd, might as well just be digital. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> now we need to talk about your single so gone. Like I want to say massive congratulations on your visuals. I'm Thank obsessed. You. I'm Thank obsessed you. with the choreography. Like from the choreography, the different looks, you were serving, honey. How did you come up with the vision for your visuals and what was the inspiration behind the unique style and different looks that you had in the video? Thank you so much. I want to send a big shout out for the girls that wrote, that did, did the dancing to um, Vanessa, um, Cindy, uh, Kia, Kira and uh, Vez, 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 Jez, <laughs> yeah, so four <laughs> girls, and especially Cindy, because she's the one who did the choreography um, be for, 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 the, for the video. Obviously, mm -hmm. I gave her some tips, some ideas of how I want it, and she just came up with the full thing. Uh, about the video itself, the concept, I wanted like to look fearless and fab mm -hmm. for the person that I was singing this to. You know, so when he see the V, so when he saw the video, because I was like, I want you to see how good I am without you, you know? Oh, so, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, there are some people that gave me an idea, like gave me different ideas, like, yeah, I could have been, you know, singing in the sun or driving off or something like that. That was also cool, but I wanted to make a statement. I wanted to like, mm. this is me. This is my present. This is what you have. This is what you're missing now. So I'm gone. Mm. You know, yes. so goodbye. Yeah, so <laughs> goodbye. Pretty much, <laughs> so pretty much that was the 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 kind of um, the kind of concept. And uh, on the visuals, I got some inspiration from here and there. You know, um, did some research of like people that I inspired me to to have the looks as well. I took a little bit of everybody. You know, I took a little bit of uh, Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Ciara, Riri, you know, so um, Solange as well. So it's a little bit, you know, and I just put them all together. So yeah, and I got a little bit of like, what, there's a there's a scene that I have like um, yes. a scarf or something. I like love that. that. That's my favorite look. And when he was <laughs> dancing, I was like, yes, come on. I love that look. Thank you. I have the I have the scar like uh, with the braids and I have all in gold. So it gives a little bit of Arabic vibes. Yeah. Cuz um cuz my name is Arabic so it's yeah. Noor and yeah. I wanted to like, you know, kind of like put a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see the culture as well. Like everything yeah. you can tell that the visuals is well thought out 
Like one of my favorite looks on there is the one that you was wearing the hat and the gloves right. and the necklaces. And then of course the scarf and the one that you had like the gold jewelry as well. Like those are my favorite looks. Like I'm telling you, that's probably one of the best visuals I've seen in 2023. And I'm oh. not saying it's because you're here. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Yes, that's it was giving awesome. culture. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so that also gives a little bit of, you know, black power because of the 70s, you know, black and gold as well. So, but it was kind of like a um, um, new version, like, you know, the new school of black power-ish. So the, the, the jewelry was my friend. She, she, she has like this brand and let me just promote it here for her as well. Kaiser Jewelry. She's the one who, who you know, sponsored the jewelry for us to put out. So she's the one who styled all it, um, all the jewels in the, in the visuals. She did a great job as well. I just said, I just said, I wanted to give like a little bit of like the Coco Chanel as well. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, back in the, um, I think they were like in the eighties. I think they were in the eighties as well. So because of, they had like the big, uh, the ex ex dramatic jewelry on, like the gold coming, the pearls and stuff like that. So it was a little bit of that as well. I love that. So yeah. when it comes to your single, So God, it has a bit of Afro pop, Afro house sound yeah. with a touch of Portuguese vibe and Afro beats. Yeah. How important is it to celebrate your heritage and embrace the Portuguese native language into your music? Uh, I feel like it's quite important because it's what I'm from. It's mm. what I'm from and I cannot forget my roots and I need to implement that into my music. Although So Gone doesn't have any Portuguese um, words, uh, I, I don't write it. I didn't write anything in Portuguese, but it, the EP itself has Portuguese songs. Mm. Um, you know, but with the culture, it's a little bit showing um, where I come from, the singing, the, the influential stuff that I, you know, I grew up with. My parents have put me to listen. So um, it's just part of me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I answered your question. Yeah, definitely. Um, but even though you didn't use the Portuguese native language on So Gone, you can tell, even with the sound, you can tell it's not, it's not any other sound. It's yeah. very unique. And you can tell that you've added that culture into that sound. Like, would you agree or? You know what's so funny? Um, you know, growing up, I used to listen a lot of like American music. Mm. And yeah, R&B. Um, but then the Portuguese would be like um, the African stuff, like the African music. And... And to me, I, I'm, you know, f for you, for example, you can say like, it's very unique what I sound, but I don't know how to, for example, I don't know if that's weird, but I don't know how to describe, for example, like, I don't know how to tell that my sound is different from the other because I know, I know, okay, I know that I sound different, but in terms of like saying that, oh, I took a little bit of this, I took a little bit of that. You know, I don't really listen as much. For example, right now, I don't listen too much of music. I just listen, like playing instruments. So I don't mm -hmm. get too much of like, you know, a lot from the other artists. Cause mm -hmm. it kind of like, you know, so um, yeah, I just try to, I know, I, do, I just try to be as creative in my own element. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Anything. know if I, I didn't answer the question. Yeah, so. you did, you did definitely. And you can tell from your EP energy, like you can tell that, even from your EP energy, it's been like well thought out. You can tell that you've experimented with different instruments, different yeah. sounds. Yeah. And of course, like you used um, like the EPs in, in English, but also with your Portuguese native language. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, like what is your EP all about? And how do you, why did you decide to title your EP energy? I mean, it's got a whole lot of different empowerment energy, healing energy, but like I'm sure the viewers want to know more. No, of course. Um, I can explain. So, um, the EP I go, I go like I explain. I sing a little bit of my personal experiences, love, um, about empowerment, how I managed to deal with things. For example, Mona Lisa, uh, which is the last song of the EP. I sing about a dark moment that i had in my life when i was in portugal and and i there's there's a there's on the pre-course i say how did you do it i'm asking myself how did i manage to go through this thing you know so i had to be strong enough to deal with those kind of things and i feel like 
um, energy. It's through like what the the type of energy I had in each phase of my life. So mm -hmm. I'm putting it out on on on. Um, I'm putting it out on the EP. For example, as well, we have Bandidu that explains a little bit of the time that I was with somebody and the whole experience with him. Bandidu means thief in Portuguese, by the way. Oh, okay. So what, what I'm saying the song is that I love this guy. I cannot breathe without him, but I definitely don't need him. Mm -hmm. um, and he had promised me multiple things uh, and said that he would never leave me, but he has left me like, you know, and he, and, he, and he stole my heart like a thief in the night. He came and he stole those things from me. Like he ripped me apart. So that's the energy I was feeling at the moment. I was like on low frequency. So, mm -hmm. and then I have um, spiritual. So because I'm a spiritualist, because I believe, you know, and, and all the good things I have like, a I have like this board in my, in my, in my place that says, see the good in all things I can see it. So every time I wake up, I believe I have to look at that and say, see the good in all things. And I have to believe that there's so much better than what I'm living. So in spiritual, I'm explaining that I managed to deal with all of the things that I sing on the EP because I'm a spiritualist. So that's the energy I, than to um, carry on. So that's the main reason I decided to call energy. <laughs> well, that is so deep. Like I'm sure a lot of women can relate to that story as well. Yeah. You know, being in love and then you're being promised a lot of things and they're not fulfilling those things that like, I'm sure it's very relatable. Um, yeah. What has the feedback so far? What has the feedback been so far when it comes to the EP? Oh, people, people actually, you know, they, they love it. They said that the song, people, they listen, there, there are people that listen to spiritual every day, so gone. And they seem like such a great uh, feedback. Um, it's just beautiful because I was so anxious, so nervous. Oh my God. <laughs> I was so nervous and anxious about releasing the, the EP. Yeah. But I don't know. Cause it's something, it's something different. It's not what it's being playing in radio. It's not, you know, mm. it's not like being on radio. So I was a little bit like, would people listen? Would they accept it? But I think it's just like that nervous, right? That you feel from for releasing a project. So amazing. Now, obviously, you've already built a, a strong fan base internationally overseas, um, and you've worked with other international artists. Is there any artist that you're looking to work with, whether it's international, Afrobeat artists? Is there any artist you have in mind that you're looking to collaborate with? Okay, so I have a few. UK, um, I, I would love, in UK, I would love to work with Rags originally. He's mm. really great. Mm. Um, who else? I believe that, um, Georgia Smith, she's really cool. I really would like, she's amazing, you know, and I really love the last song she released as well. Um, in terms of now internationally, Burna Boy, definitely, um, Thames, I would love to work with Thames. And people say like, we have similar voices, so I would be yeah. curious to see how it would sound in studio. I I'm actually curious to know. Um, if Riri comes out of the market, <laughs> the market. I mean, if she comes to the market, back to the market. Um, you know, it's a, it's a lot. It's a, it's a long. It's um, it's called. It's an ambitious feature. You know, it's very ambitious, but it's not impossible. So yeah, it's not possible. You can. We, I can definitely see that. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, there's a few more. Oh, Solange. I would love to work with Solange. Yes. Solange, she's she's just she's amazing. Yeah. I definitely see you on a track with Georgia Smith. You know, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that is a collaboration that needs to happen. Every every single one of them that you mentioned as well. But Georgia Smith, that's that's the one I definitely see you. I'm pretty sure um, it would do pretty well. She, I'm pretty sure it would work because she has like that very neo like R&B ish vibe, yeah. very chill. And then with the Afro pop as well, if we implement the Afro pop, I think the sound it would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, we need to speak that into existence because it is going to happen. <laughs> <That's that. laughs> so what's what's the goal for you then? What's the goal? Is the goal to be a major international artist? What is the goal for you in terms of the music? 
so i've been asked this question lately a lot you know mm -hmm. Mm. Why are you, uh, so that has to mean something. I have to know what exactly that means. So, um, but I want to be recognized as one of the biggest like performing artists mm. in the world. You know, internationally, one of like let's just say like an African as well with the African from Angola coming from Angola in Portugal. You know, it's the main goal um, to be at least nominated. You know, at least mm. just to be nominated as one of the best um, uh, new neo Afro pop sound, because I feel like my Afro comes with a lot of new R and B ish. You know, yes. so I, I think like neo in the Afro. So being as uh, being nominated for this new genre, I think maybe yeah. So yeah, and just to you know to be seen as like yeah the main African um, artist that came. I wow. love that. Yeah. I love that. That's amazing. Now, other than music, what does Noor like to do? Like, you know, summer's here. We outside. I, is Noor outside? Like, what, is, what else do you like to do? You seem very outgoing. <laughs> oh, you, you know, Fats, it's so funny that you say that because I'm actually not. I'd rather stay at home. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Wait, you're an introvert. I am very, very, very. Really? Very, you have no idea. You know what I'm gonna say? I just do those things because I have to do. Nobody will. Uh, there's not. There's not another nerd that will go on stage. Otherwise, I would have just. Because <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. I just feel like when when I'm on stage, I'm being the artist. I'm being the performer. But then mm -hmm. outside, I'm just you know I'm very laid back, very chill. I don't like to go out clubbing. I'd rather have like my friends at you know at home, like listening to music that I like, and you know just chill. Too. or traveling stuff like that oh but, okay where do you like to travel then are you a big traveler i yeah well recently i've been you know yeah you went to dubai recently didn't you i went to dubai so asking to answer your question so i work i'm working like as a representative for angola um to mm. promote dubai so i work for dubai tourism and mm. I, yeah, I work. I represent Angola in that matter. So basically, how can I explain? So you see, all sub-Saharan countries, like all African countries, that mention Dubai. Yeah, that's, that's us. That's my company. So okay. we, yeah, we represent Dubai in all African. We represent all. Yeah, we represent Dubai in all African countries. So uh, if Dubai is doing any African event, anything, or just like you know an event that needs to cover to Africa. We are there, we cover mm -hmm. it, and then we put it out in our media. So I will go to Angolan media. Other people have their own countries. We have Nigeria, we have Kenya, we have Uganda, we have Ethiopia, uh, we have Rwanda, um, Angola, and so on. Yeah, and a few other more. So I love that. Yeah. And how was your trip in Dubai? Did you enjoy it? Oh, I loved it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it so much. It was just such a clean place. The hotel I stayed in it was like, oh, of course. I had my name on like as soon as I entered my room. I had, like, <laughs> hello, Mrs. My, well, my royal name is Nuria. So hello, Mrs. Nuria. Um, the treatment was five star. Um, the 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 restaurants, amazing food is amazing. I thought everything was cheap, but it was actually expensive. I made like the hinas. Yeah, Inas and the woman she had charged me how much did she she charged me three hundred dinram for each hand. I I was like three hundred dinram, okay, because in port in because in Angola three hundred Kwanzas is is equal to almost nothing. Mm. So I I don't know why I did that calculation, which is silly. So I'm like okay, whatever. So I think I've paid in total around like almost a hundred and something pounds for those things. Something that could be probably 30 pounds or maybe 15 pounds. Wow. And I, I end up paying hundred and something pounds. So if you, if yeah. <laughs> so if you a tourist there, make sure you have somebody to walk with you, like a, a guide, a tourist guide. So people don't lie about the prices. Yeah. Um, I'll visit um, Dera. Dera mm. is like um, a local, so it's the old city in there which is um it's quite it's cheap so this is where people travel to to buy the cheap stuff that they talk about in in, in dubai you know so yeah. cell phones clothes hair stuff like that um or furnitures whatever um 
things there were, were there's like this big market, let's just say like, you know, like when you go to the the nine, nine, 199 shop, it's huge and you find everything. You find food, you find clothes, you find furniture, you find anything you, anything you can possibly think, anything, things that you don't even need, you can find them. <laughs> but yeah it was it was fun it was great that's amazing to hear is there any other countries you would like to visit um or is dubai that that destination like you gotta go back right that's the one destination i have to go back definitely but i would love to visit other african uh i would like to visit african countries like i want to travel all african continent not to mention let me just add sorry that one of the events we had major league in there so we were oh, i got to meet, okay. i got to meet major league um interview them so it was it was it was pretty pretty cool we were at this runway fashion show like a, a fashion show with like a we could, there there were like different african stylists that went to dubai for the first african fashion show you know Af- so it's a middle east african fashion show something like that. yeah I love that. And were you one of those people that was doing the runway or? I was not. I was invited. I was in front row though. Oh, okay. Row. That's nice. Photographed. I was there. It was looking pretty. And I had the clothes from um, Akua, Miss Akua. So she's a designer here in the UK, actually from Ghana. And she does amazing pieces and I was wearing her stuff. So it's really Ooh, pretty cool. I love yeah. that. Now, other than music, of course, you're Angolan, you're from Portugal. What yeah. is it that you also love about the culture, the country? Is it the food? Is it the men? Is it the <laughs> language? What is it that you like? About Angola or Portugal? Both. Okay, I will split. Mm. So, Angola. I wasn't born in Angola. I was born in Portugal. Okay. In Portugal. And I only traveled to Angola in 2011. That was the first time I actually went to Angola. And at first I hated it because there were like big flies. I never saw a big fly in my life. Like I, I ran, like literally I ran from them flies. I saw roaches flying and stuff. Like Oh my was, God. Roach, I didn't know that roaches flew. Like they literally fly, like they're huge. I had no idea either. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Trust me. So, um, but then the second time I went, I had already made friends on the first trip. So the views, like, it's gorgeous. Like, we have this island called Ilha do Musulu, the island Ooh. of Ilha. It sounds very tropical. It is tropical. The water is so clear, so okay. clean, so beautiful. And the houses are so, like, the wood, you know, like, the wood, the beach houses and stuff. Yes. So, uh so every what do they say the new year's eve so the, for the new year's eve people travel to like the cool kids like the cool mm. kids travel to Ilha do Musulu and you know make a big party over there we stay at somebody's house like you know big party food and stuff like that last year i actually spent my new year's eve there uh with my father and friends of my father we went we're just chilling the we the, the the my father's friends they hired the dj catering stuff like that we had we had people serving us and stuff like it was it was like the it was like, a vibe wasn't it it was a vibe it was a vibe we had champagne there you know food popping it was it was lit it was lit yeah um so we have that parties like parties are amazing around december because like mm. the clubs the first time i went to a club it was in Portugal, but the second time it was in Angola. And I never had been in a club that's open and right in front to the beach. Like to the beach to the beach. Like yeah. Mm-hmm. A club. And in and, and who was playing at that first night? It was Black Coffee. Black Coffee was playing the second time I went to a nightclub. It was amazing. So now outside Angola, uh, there are the provinces which are the more clean. Outside Angola, I haven't visited. I haven't gone yet because, um, well, my parents never allowed me to travel outside of Luanda. I mean, um, Luanda is the capital, and then you have the provinces. So I've never been outside Luanda. My parents like it's too dangerous to travel. Um, we have like uh, Benguela, which is one of. They say that they have the most beautiful women in Benguela. Uh, then we have um Ouij. Ouij is the very traditional magic stuff oh you know yeah. all the magic stuff goes in what, what kind of magic like this is what they call the witches wizards all them people are there oh. like, yeah, 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 yeah like 
that's all the spiritual stuff it's over there oh okay they, people they say people fly around there okay so <laughs> well like humans yeah the, yeah stuff like they, they do <laughs> I mean, but it's a part of African culture, so mm. I mean, aren't we supposed to fly? I don't know. I, mean, I, I, I had no idea. This is the first I'm hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> when listen, when I heard it, I was like, "You're lying! Like, you cannot be true." But no, like, but have you actually seen them? Fly? I have, girl. I have not seen them, and I think I'm not ready to see that. I, I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I'm ready. But there's like, okay, let's just say that there's a lot of stories, but I don't know. Okay this point i don't doubt of anything you know yeah yeah so um yeah so we have the the waterfalls beautiful Ashkedesh de Karangula, Karangula. i think i'm i don't know if i'm pronouncing it correct but mm. there are beautiful waterfalls the famous waterfalls from angola it's really gorgeous um the people are very warm very warm, very welcoming even with little they they share what they don't have they like you know they share the little that they have and you know people are very welcoming and it's just beautiful always with a smile in their faces always looking happy even when things are really rough so that's the beauty of angola and um now going to portugal um growing up in portugal it was it was interesting, you know, it was, it's my, it's, it's where I grew up. Um, you know, high school was great. I was, you know, popular. Uh, okay. you, you're one of the popular groups then, yeah? Of course, like, but I was a nerd popular, okay? I was like, oh, you know, okay. I had great school, uh, how do you say, great grades? Yeah. Great, great grades, president of student association. I was there like, you know, I was bossing everybody oh, around. Man. Yeah. Are you, are you, you were one of them ones. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> like, listen, you have to do this and this and that because we're going, you know, <laughs> you know, <like>, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but pretty cool as well, very, but very cool. Yeah. Um, the summer was always fun because it was so hot, like, summer is really hot, and summer starts really early in Portugal. Mm. Um, people are quite traditional, it's an old country, mm. so so the reason for it's an old country and there's a lot of senior people senior people like um it's most of like the young people they travel they get out you know they travel abroad and they start their lives abroad um but there's rich in history portugal is rich in history like everywhere mm -hmm. you go you see a little bit of history um the, but the way that buildings are made um, the palace, they, they, you know, they still have the palaces, the castles. Um, there was this one place that I traveled in Evora. It's outside Lisbon. And it's called the Catedral dos Ossos. Mm. The Bones Cathedral. So we saw there was this place inside the cathedral that was made of bones, people's bones and stuff like that. Like back mm -hmm. in, yeah, back way back in the medieval times so they preserve the history so that's really beautiful the food is amazing cheap mm, yes the food is amazing i went portugal last year the food is nice so it's nice isn't it <laughs> nice nice <laughs> and it's really cheap because you have the starters you have the main dessert and yeah, you get a yes. drink and all for a good price you know yeah so can you cook of course i can cook girl <laughs> what's your favorite portuguese dish Oh, I really love ubitoke. Oh, what, what, what was that dish? So ubitoke is the rice with the beef and the egg with the fries. Yeah, and then the the beef is it's 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 I don't know is it fried with the garlics and all around mm, the garlic. That's yeah. my kind of dish. Yes. Yeah, and they have the the olives, the olives around. Yeah, with some um yeah with the the fries with fried fried fries. Yeah, it's fries, isn't it? Fried fries, okay. fried fries, and the right rice. And sometimes we can implement with the black beans if you want to, but then we have the egg that is um how do you call when you the 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 egg that has the gem in the, with the gem when you fry it like that the white with white and it's uh oh the white and then it's yellow in the middle yeah yeah how do you call it that um what's that egg called oh my god it's gonna annoy me what's that you egg have, called you have scrambled you have scrambled eggs then you have you have omelette. Omelette? No, it's not. It's not. It's omelette. a scrambled omelette. It's like one 
what do they call it? An one eye egg, something like that. But and that one, probably. Yeah. yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I know <laughs> which one you're talking about. <laughs> so yeah, so that's that's the typical Portuguese dish di dish, and you find it everywhere, but pay attention, it's not everywhere that it's cooked pr precisely because you have you can eat at the very posh restaurant that the, we talk but it's not going to be the same as like if you go like to the cheap uh like they they call it natashka you go like to the cheap restaurant like the the local restaurant that's when they mm. they cook the best the food is, is it like one of them street food shops, yeah. Right? yeah yeah yeah, so but that's it's always like that everywhere to be honest. They, they have the best it is, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. is. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and then port in Angola food, my favorite one is the funge funge con ah oh my gosh. What do you call it? the funge with the ah oh, let me see the funge with the yeah. oh my god, let me see. Oh whatever. So so basically the funge is like um fufu. Oh ours it's it's a little bit stiff. Ours is stiff. It's not like soft like mm. the young. Yeah, yeah. So we I like I like the, the 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 gray one, not the yellow one, because you have the the corn one, and then you have the one that comes from the uh, I don't know the name in port in English. So anyway, we have we cook the the fufu. We, mm -hmm. put it, we put it in the water. Yeah, you have to you have to let the water heat. Okay. Then you put the powder, the the white powder, you with the with the wood. Stick. Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. You do it like you know, and so um, once it's done, you have like the black the palm oils. The no, yeah, the palm oil beans, the palm yeah. oil beans with um with some with some meat with the beef. Oh my god, I can't. I don't know the names in English. Oh, I have to show you. <laughs> that looks good and yeah. you can make that right you can make yeah, that. yeah 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 and i i've done with the beans like i'm not seeing the beans here but i've made with the beans let me see okay this is the uh, divided oh that looks mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's, the beans. that's the beans and that's the kalulu that's kalulu called the kalulu and that's the fufu, fufu. oh yeah. that looks nice yeah it's amazing it takes time to cook though too oh but I'm sure you you can throw it down in the kitchen. You can like do you can make it yourself, can't you? Yeah, I did, I done this like the other like few Sundays ago. I was like, I've missed so much. I miss home, so let me just you know cook something to feel like I'm home. But it's like yeah, that was next to next month until next month because this <laughs> it's a one month thing. Do it once. Are you one of those people you can't stay in the kitchen for too long? I don't like cooking. I don't like cooking at all. But I know the funny thing is like I my food is amazing yeah. my food is amazing but i hate cooking <laughs> <laughs> have you ever I'm... thought of maybe one day starting your own cooking book girl <laughs> if i hate cooking i'm definitely i'm making a cooking book <laughs> what <laughs> but no we can way. tell you're gonna you're gonna be one of them wives that will throw it down in the kitchen right I will throw, listen, I will give you the, the starters, I will give you the main, I will give you the dessert, even if there's no, I will give you the after dessert, listen, I will do everything, and I'll make it, and I'll make sure I'll make it to last a week, because I'm not cooking again. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> now, other than the food and the culture, the history, what about the men? I heard the men are beautiful in Angola. Yeah, they are handsome. They are really handsome. The men are so handsome. Mm, very. Yeah. <laughs> and they carry well. So they are handsome. They 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 carry a well a posture, you know, there's a they're gentlemen. But they're also it's a there's a pros and cons. But do you prefer UK men or Angolan men? Oh no, I prefer Angolan men. Like seriously. <laughs> if I came to the UK, like, oh my god, I'm not saying that there's bad, but you know, there's a there's a there's an important thing about staying connected to your culture. Mm. You know, being connected to your culture because there are boundaries. Because Angolan men, even if a man, if a, even a woman is acting all silly, he will still act right. But when I say act right, it's like even if they are outside or something, the guy will still has his posture, and he will know how to deal with that woman. You know, and whatever mm. whatever happens. Closed doors, it's closed doors. But outdoors, he will be a gentleman. 
Mm. You know, and, yeah. and and then he you can you can do the most as a woman. You can do the most, whatever shout, whatever, whatever, whatnot. He will still he will carry himself pro- properly, but then outside he can leave you, never talk to you again, ghost you, whatever. But he will still have that posture. But um, obviously not gonna ghost, but. I don't know. There's something different, and they, they, you know, guys in Angola, they still open the door for you. They still, you yes. know, they they carry like I I went I went for Christmas and last Christmas to Angola, and I was I went out with my cousin, and the guy he just was carrying my friend my my cousin's purse. We were partying everything, and he was carrying her purse like just he was chilling. It was cool, you know. And I was like, damn, he really didn't need to do that. But like, you know. He's a gentleman. Obviously, some men that don't feel comfortable with that, but it's about how you feel comfortable with your masculinity, you know? Mm. And and Angolan men, they really like to laugh a lot. They make fun of everything. They just laugh, laugh, laugh a lot, you know? <laughs> but they're also great liars. So that, that's why oh. I say there's, they're great liars and they like to jump a lot. So let's just, they like to jump a lot. So, and, and, and What do you mean, them. jump a lot? <laughs> when they jump, they jump into women, like oh, oh. jumping, yeah, you know. So, um, but I think it's there's a pros and cons with every man in each culture, anyway. So, um, and one thing I noticed here, like UK, they they don't try, you know, want to go on a date. They don't try. They don't try to dress nice, you know, mm-hmm. put a on and stuff like that. Not all of them. Attention, guys. Don't start like I'm not saying every. <laughs> like but mostly you know and angolan men they like to smell nice they like to dress nice you know mm. they smell nice they dress nice and they're so calm with their there's such poise there's a poise in there you know um and they talk when they talk to a woman they change the tone when they talk to a woman and there's some some around here they just like they're the same they just there, existing. <laughs> yeah, it's not about they the same, because obviously you have to be the same, but they just there. They don't care if, no. if you can, you can like, listen, you can go to the hair salon, you can have your nails done, just like, and they, some of here, they're not going to give you that compliment, you know? Mm. So it's it's a bit a bit of that. But I've dated some UK, I've went out on a date with some UK guys that actually were nice. They, yeah, they were nice. Yeah, 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 they were nice. They were nice. Interesting. Cool. So what's yeah. next for Noor? What are you currently working on? Are you still working on new music? What what what's next? What's next for Noor? So I'm working on my next EP, Ooh. and I'm still I'm still deciding if I should call. But I think I'm gonna call it Love Signs. So the next EP will be called Love Signs. Okay. And nice. Yeah. So it's it's uh it's a little bit of um you know self love about all of that. You know what kind of what is lo- like how love can be represented mm, um, nice so um yeah i'm i'm almost finishing the ep um i have uh, i have um pretension can you say that word pretend because I, I i want to is, mm. that is it I, pre- I intend okay i intend, yeah, I intend, I intend yeah. thank you i intend to release uh around october Okay. Nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm already working on the visuals. Uh, we're having we're going to shoot a video clip next week for one of the nice. uh, one of the prom- single the singles that is going to be out soon for mm-hmm. the EP. And um, yeah, and more more things coming. Oh, I have a few shows lined up. I cannot say anything yet, but yes. it's going to be uh, it's going to be outside UK. It's going to be abroad. We love so, that. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's too soon to tell, and pretty much, yeah. I love that. So the <laughs> EP that you've got next is it relatable to um, what you have going on? Is it relatable to your life, um, or is it something that you know? Um, yeah, just it's, in general, it's, re- it's related. It's related to my life and uh, faces I've been through with somebody. Mm-hmm. and all the phases of like when you get to know a guy when you're dating the guy after the breakup once you're finally through with the guy and then when he tries to come back so mm-hmm. and you know all the uh, roller coaster of emotions that you feel through that 
yeah love that now as you know it's summer we outside and a lot of the single ladies what advice yeah we outside what advice do you have for all the single ladies out there now that it's the summer and we want to live it up what advice do you have for them um to live your fullest live your life like it's your last so it can be remember you know mem memorable um but also be bear in mind that um you know, live with no regrets, but also bear, bear in mind that you are a grown ass woman. So, you know, you should know what's right and what's wrong. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> you know. Basically, stay safe. Okay. Exactly. Stay safe, girl. It's crazy out here. Let me tell you. Mm. So, some, some, there are some bad intention people out there that won't tell you the, the whole truth. So, it's up to you to take care of yourself because nobody will do that for you. So, live, live your fullest, but eyes open. Hey, tell them. Can you yeah, translate um, that in uh, Angolan? What? Can you translate that in Angolan? Uh, viva a tua vida como se fosse o teu último o teu último momento para não te, para não esqueceres para ser algo memorável né uh, mas também tem cuidado com o que tu fazes porque há pessoas mal intencionadas e nessas pessoas todas não te vão dizer há pessoas não te vão dizer a verdadeira intenção delas então tu és bem crescidinha para saber o que é certo e o que é errado uh, ai 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 let them know yeah I love the language it's just so beautiful like Thank honestly you. But I just want to say thank you so much, Noor, for coming okay. to my platform. Any last words, where the people can find you? What advice do you actually have for up-and-coming artists that want to do what you do, want to become an international artist? And, you know, they're starting, like, from young, but they just don't know how to, like, go about things or they feel a bit scared. Um, so the advice i give is to know your worth as an artist don't just accept anything like any gigs i'm learning that now because you have to see if it's going to complement anything in your portfolio um do research about how your music should be out in terms of platform because now it's a lot of digital a lot of numbers it's really important for you to know how to target your audience um study the music business because it's not just about being an artist this is a business and you are a brand you are a company so look at yourself that way um be humbled but also be confident being humble doesn't mean that you have to accept anything you know it doesn't mean you have to accept anything yeah it don't doesn't mean that you have to accept anything from anyone so uh stay confident with who you are and stay firm with your mind if you have anything in mind don't let the left and the right tell you what is right for your music don't ask too many opinions if you do ask for opinions ask for the people that are about the music and i have the right ears and the right vision so um pretty much that's what i can get and have fun and sit have fun because if you take it too serious mm, ain't about that life <laughs> i'm just <laughs> yeah the enjoyment starts to wear out and you, it's, it just yeah. becomes like a chore isn't it it, it is because you start feeling more your energy starts to get drained you feel like you're not reaching anything you mm. start getting depressed depressed of like oh nobody 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 no you make your own opportunity and i've i've had to learn that the hard way you know i was mm. i was signed way back when i was in angola i was signed to a record label and i didn't feel appreciated so I left everything. I came to the UK. That's the reason I came to the UK. I'm on a mission. And I started from scratch. In Angola, I was already on TV. I was signing autographs. I had people recognizing me in the street, you know. So, but I left there. I left because I wasn't fulfilled. I was, I felt like I could have been better and, and, and I could have been better. I could have do, I could have do, done better. So I came to the UK. I did my degree in music business so I could understand how I had to see myself in a different way. And it's been working out since then. I only came back to the music four years or three years ago. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's working pretty well. I'm independent. I'm still learning. Obviously there's a still long road, but I'm happy the person I'm becoming. So I yeah. love that. And yeah. where can the people find you? Where can the people find the latest EP, the music, the 
new EP that's coming out very soon, the new visuals that's about coming out soon. Like, let them know. Give them the tea. Yeah, so you guys can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram as N-U-R underscore M-U-S-I-I-K. So it's Noor underscore music. You can find me on Spotify as Noor and just type my EP energy uh, to be easy to find. Um, you can find me on YouTube as well with the same ad, ad Noor underscore music. Um, Twitter is the same. Everything for my Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, it's all the same. Ed, and you are underscore music, M U S I I K. Yeah. I love that. I want to say thank you so much, Noah, for coming to my platform. I really appreciate it. Um, and we should see you very soon on our screens. And we're looking forward to the new EP. And if you haven't, make sure you guys check out the latest visuals, the single, So Gone. It's yeah. fire. Fire. It's, out. it's so gone. It's out on YouTube. You can check it out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, we should see you very soon, Noor. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>